Today, Victor Petrek got official recognition. In St. Petersburg Radio Institute, his inventions received most positive recommendations. We have already told you how Petrek's plant transforms radioactive water into drinking water. The invention was tested near Chelyabinsk at lakes polluted by radioactive waste. The director of Radio Institute keeps promising developments under secure control. Behind a one-meter width door, there starts the real science. St. Petersburg genius inventor Victor Petrek is trying to interpret his technology into simple terms. This invention is phenomenon of formation of carbonic nanostructures and cold destruction of compound carbonic compositions. At the Institute, founded by Lenin's decree, which is now one of the most authoritative Russian institutes dealing with radiation problems, Petrick's technology was tested under microscope. The results were too unbelievable to believe. Nanofilters clear out radioactive nuclide of strontium from water and transform contaminated water into drinking one. On the surface, it looks quite nice and serene, beautiful lake and all the scenery, but it is so only for people who don't understand that there is death all around. Techno Lake's Cascade in Chilabysk region is a living victim of arms race. Here there was radioactive plutonium waste storage, but now we know that this water can be saved using nanotechnologies. Technology based on brand new nanotechnological principles has proved to work. The plant tested at almost secret mode on the 11th reservoir of Chilabysk region has already aroused quite an interest on the west. There are also a number of radiated lakes. There is no analogy to such a nanotechnology in the world. It's absolutely an original technology. During VIP guests' visit, the scientists didn't take the risk to run radioactive experiments and just presented the unique installation at idle mode. The installation that was tested at the 11th reservoir has purified the water there but become radioactive itself. That is why the head of Russian nuclear industry and Duma speaker, Mr. Grislow, sees its analog instead. The scientists hope that this achievement will not get lost in bureaucratic lobbies. This installation allows to clean water from liquid radioactive waste, which contains 2,500 till 3,000 becquerels per radiation liter to the non-interventional level, one becquerel per liter. Encouraged by such high-ranking support, the ingenious inventor from St. Petersburg takes promise for new breakthroughs, for example, cyclotron with nanonuclides for nuclear medicine. Nikita Anisimov, Anatoly Vaskin, Vladimir Tukushitel, NTV Channel, St. Petersburg. Nanomaterials allowed us to get structures that comply with output standard, which is one becquerel per liter. You can see the results which we have achieved. The technology does work and its perspective. It can solve the problem of water purification up to 5 million liters per year. What are your anticipations? To what extent the technology can be realized? It's clear with Tech and Cascade. As far as I understand, you and Mr. Patrick have tested the same technology on waste produced by the State Institute of Chemical Industry. This means we can also purify the institute's residues as well, doesn't it? No problem, we can clean tritium, 100% yes. We have all the required certificates for this case, and you have seen them. What about problems of nuclear submarines waste? How can it be used? What's your opinion? For example, on the north and far east there is a lot of waste of that kind and I think this technology can be applied there. Here the most crucial ecological problem is to be solved. A year ago, during its coverings, 
United Russia Party approved of the party's project called Pure Water. It's a universal project. I'd like to pay your attention to the fact that life expectancy of Russian citizens is around 60 years, and this figure means our place at the second half of the first hundred of the world countries. And so, we can't take as it is the fact that Russian people live such short lives. And one of the main reasons for that is consumption of bad quality water. There is a widespread saying that a man is what he eats. And here I'd like to argue against the phrase and say that a man is what he drinks, because human body cells contain 80% of water. It's the fact. And the system of housing maintenance and utilities, as well as the water treatment system existing in big cities and delivering drinking water to residents, they do not provide the required water quality. Half of the bottled water that our citizens buy from retail trading is falsified, and as an ex-internal affairs minister I can say it with all the responsibility for the words. I know the situation. And the second half, which is not falsified, it doesn't comply with the standards and laboratory analysis, and so they cannot be qualified as ideal drinking water. Besides, there is another great problem, which is liquid radioactive waste. It's obvious that all nuclear plants, with no exception, have their waste reservoirs. And today it's impossible to get electricity without water. So there is water waste. And water waste contains liquid radioactive fallouts. There are huge reservoirs for that. For example, Techen Cascade with 100 million tons of radioactive water. And the existing technologies, and we are speaking about world technologies, they do not solve the problem. For the first time we have got a tested idea of purification of liquid radioactive waste at industrial scale and at reasonable costs. I think that now for the first time in history we can see such an installation that allows to serve this very task. The residues that we are to purify are strontium-90, cobalt-60, cesium-137, europane-152, 154 and 155. They are the radionuclides which are radioactive and which are contained in water. All this is really purified to the level of maximum allowable concentration according to our standards. There is a term, non-interventional level, which is the level of purification of water used as drinking water. This installation allows to clean water from liquid radioactive waste, which contains 2,500 till 3,000 becquerels per radiation liter to the non-interventional level, one becquerel per liter. That's the result we are discussing today. To have budget financing for years 2008-2010, the figures have been approved within the federal budget framework, and there are sources necessary for the activities. The only thing to do is to transfer the sources into this very project, and then, as early as next year, we'll be able to purify water from liquid radioactive waste. The project can start from Leningrad region. At least we can start from Gip natural reservoir. Unfortunately, this reservoir is quite close to St. Petersburg itself, and I think that everybody is interested in purifying the reservoir, and now we have such a possibility. So here I have underlined the political side of the problem. As for filters, reactors, electrical processes, it's better to ask Mr. Patrick and Mr. Romanovsky, though I also know what and how is going on here. You do know. I'd like to say that nanotechnologies allow to do what is demanded at the required scale. As for the method, it's well-known electrochemical method. 
but here it served to the totally different function, and only because of the fact that the electrodes are pressed from nanospinals. And only this makes it possible to achieve the results. For the cabins, we have built production giving out 85 kilos of nanometals per day. So we have elaborated all the necessary procedures to work at production scales. And to change filters, of course, using nanomaterials. Pay attention, we expect something unbelievable from nanotechnologies. And now we can check if our expectations are right or wrong. This material has been tested in the US. In a governmental US laboratory, it was compared with the best American solvent jet produced from coconut. For its absorbent capabilities, my material is pre-harded 50 times more capable than all the other best materials ever produced in the world. And so, I have built a plant with its today capacity of 300 tons, which will solve the problem of liquid radioactive waste not only in Russia, but in other countries as well. So it's not just pure technology, but it has all the facilities for its overall implementation. Petersburg is a really important center. Let me remind you of the fact that you are now at a quite unique institute, where all the Soviet nuclear industry started from. The institute is 85 years old, and nuclear industry is 62. From here, radioactive material started from, as well as Soviet school, which would later produce nuclear shield of the country. Here in St. Petersburg, we have a great number of nuclear productions. Here is fundamental science, as well as the Radium Institute. Quite near, there is nuclear station and all the Sosnova Bor complex, which works for military programs, as well as fundamental and practical projects. Just look, what great job we have done so far. First, there was just an experimental installation that worked with a few liters scale at laboratory. And this spring, we with Mr. Grislow discussed real implementation of the project in existing radioactive waste reservoirs. That's why we signed a contract with the Radium Institute this summer and installed the plant on Techen Cascade in Chilabysk region and put it into real conditions. The results are so that now we can drink this water, excepting the background radiation from the lakes. During this summer we mounted the installation on the cascade and it worked out not liters but more than 100 tons of water. This is quite industrial scale and it proves the installation can work at industrial scales. And this proves the fact that we should start it right now, from 2008. Now we can transfer the existing sources into the project and in 2008 we will be able to start. So we have discussed it with Mr. Romanovsky and I hope that Mr. Patrick will agree that we can not only start but accomplish the activities in 2008. That means to solve the problem of the Chemical Institute, which is the sole place of St. Petersburg. There is a thousand tons of liquid radioactive waste there. Such a plant will solve the problem in 3-4 months' time. And then we can speak about the fact that this installation is very mobile and there is no need for a fixed station. And it can be used for Chepinsky and Novosibirsk factories, which are really important. 
And here also comes the problem of nuclear submarine waste. So we speak about northwest region. A few years ago, the Russian Atom received the task to utilize atomic submarines waste. We are already performing the program. At schools, at birth and centers, now people can drink real blue water. British scientists carried out research to find out the reasons of children's tiredness, and they found out that it has to do with bad quality of drinking water. At such scales, this problem has never been solved, and in this sense, this technology is really unique.